Hey everyone, I'm Simon Boxall in for Donna Bush with your CIGTV News Brief for this Wednesday, the 30th of November. Thanks for being here. As part of this year's local World AIDS Day activities, the Health Services Authority and Public Health Department will commemorate World AIDS Day with a, free, a week of free HIV and STI testing starting on Wednesday, the 30th of November and going through to Thursday, the 8th of December. Founded in 1988, World AIDS Day was the first ever global health day and is, and is observed annually on the 1st of December. This year's equalized theme is a call to action. It's a prompt for all to work for the proven practical actions needed to address inequalities and help end AIDS by increasing the availability, quality, and suitability of services for HIV treatment, testing, and prevention so that everyone is well served. For further information, email jennifer.miller at hsa.ky or call 947-2299 or just call the Public Health Department at 244-2889. The opening ceremony of the Caribbean Financial Action Task Force plenary took place today at the Kimpton Seafire Resort. Over 200 delegates were present as Honorable Samuel Bulgin, Attorney General and Vice Chair, delivered remarks to begin the meeting. As I said, welcome to this, the 55th uh, plenary for the CFATF, and it is being held here at the beautiful, magnificent Kimpton Seafire Resort and Spa in Grand Cayman. Special welcome, of course, to those of you visiting from overseas. We trust that your experience through the airport and to your hotel and transitioning into Cayman Islands in general has been nothing but pleasant. So on behalf of the government, we're delighted, immensely delighted, to extend a warm Cayman kind welcome to you. Uh, I mentioned that this is a very significant plenary for a number of reasons, not least of which is because it is the first in-person in plenary for the last three years, um, of course, thanks to COVID, is also of significance that CFATF, as the first FATF regional style body, is celebrating or marking its 30 years of existence. And maybe of less significance, but nonetheless of some significance, is the fact that this will be the third occasion on which the Cayman Islands will be hosting the plenary, and of course, assuming chairmanship of the organization. Cayman has been an active member of the uh, CFATF since its inception in 1992. The jurisdiction has been implementing measures to combat money laundering and terrorism financing. Hosting the Caribbean Financial Action Task Force plenary meeting aligns with the government of the Cayman Islands' mission to enhance and solidify the territory's reputation as a preeminent jurisdiction for financial services. Commandant Robert Scotland of the Cayman Islands Coast Guard is reminding persons of the temporary maritime zone that will be in place on Friday the 2nd of December and Saturday the 3rd of December for the Cayman Islands Air Show. This is Commander Robert Scotland, Commandant of the Cayman Islands Coast Guard. Acting in accordance with the authority granted to me under the Cayman Islands Coast Guard Act, and with the approval of His Excellency the Governor, there will be a temporary maritime restricted zone imposed between 9 a.m. and 2.30 p.m. on both December the 2nd and 3rd. During this time, no unauthorized vessels of any type or description will be permitted to be within the restricted zone. This temporary restricted zone will be between the shoreline of Heritage Club condos and the governor's residence, extending outward into the ocean half a mile. For ease of reference, these points can be identified on the attached map as points North A and B and South A and B, and are approximately 1.2 miles apart. We trust that the public will take heed of these precautions so that all can enjoy the activities planned for the Cayman Isles Air Show. Thank you. Turning now to tonight's weather, the forecast calls for partly cloudy skies with a 30% chance of showers.
Temperatures will fall to the upper 80s and winds will be east to northeast, 10 to 15 knots. Seas will be moderate with wave heights of 3 to 5 feet. A reminder for the latest on expected local weather conditions, go online to weather.gov.ky. And that's it for today's news brief. I'm Simon Boxall, in for Donna Bush as always, thanking you for joining us here today. Have a good night, everyone.